so here's what we did in our agency. And I know that we're in a different spot than, than a lot of you guys, but we've got hundreds of sites that we've built and we've got hundreds of sites that are kind of not where we want them to be, right? They're, um, they're, they're ranking better in the past or they're, they've been built and worked on, but then we had other stuff and it kind of pulled our attention off of those. And, you know, I, uh, in a meeting, we do a weekly meeting with my team. I think it was two weeks ago. We kind of agreed that we're trying to do too many things at once. So we decided to really narrow our focus. So we came through and, and of these like three or 400 sites that we have in our agency, we, we narrowed it down to 20 and we said, Hey, we think these are the most important 20 for the next 90 days. So we got those. And then we said, okay, this is the manager that is responsible for these. So I ended up moving one of our managers into being the, the support for our team. So now we have one less manager, but we've narrowed it down. We're going to be like putting a, a, a new manager in there at some point, but we've narrowed it down to what two managers can, can handle. So we say, each of you guys get 10 sites. So they've got 90 days. They have 10 sites. A lot of these sites are related. For instance, there's only like, um, I think four markets that we're in because sometimes like if you go into, let's say you go into like um, Los Angeles or let's say Orange County, right? You've got like Huntington Beach, Anaheim. So we'll, we'll split it up and we'll build sites in each one to attack that whole market. So when they have 10 sites, it might only, it's only a few markets that they're working in. They're all kind of like going to the same client. So we, we took the time, we built out a spreadsheet. So this is what we did. So we spent the last couple of days going through this. We arrived. This is the, there, there are 20, these were the markets and the niches that we were, that we were interested in. We classified it by the potential revenue, the upside potential of the revenue. We had a difficulty rating in here for the, for the niche. Some of these, like you see this, we, we think that we're, we're potentially going to lose this client here. So we rank this one as high. And our current position is like, um, that is really the positioning that we have within the market. So some of the things that we were taking into an account when we considered this were like, what is, how many websites do we have? How many GMVs do we have? Like what, how many reviews? We were kind of looking at the assets that we had in place in this market to understand like how well positioned we were to really take over the, take over the area. So we were rating these things from one to 10 right? With 10 being um, the like, so 10 would be the most difficult. 10 would be the highest revenue, right? And this 10 would be the, the happiest client. And in our current position, like 10 would mean that we're like dominating, right? But all, like we have a lot of sites that aren't on this list because they're in a very good place. These are ones that we thought, hey, if we put some work into this, we can really get some good return on it. So this is what we did is we came through we looked at all the sites that we had in all the different areas. And then we said, these are the ones that we think are the most important. And then we took this and we, um, we broke down into the actual websites. These were kind of like the markets. And then we broke it down into actual websites. And then from here, we have things like, okay, now we know the websites. How many GMBs do we have for this site? How, what are the backlinks look like? How much content is on this site? What's the heat map average? That's a big one for us. I don't think things really pop unless the heat map average is, is going to be good. So like, for instance, you're going to run the heat map and you're going to get the average score for that heat map from all the different points on the grid. And you're going to do this for maybe like five, seven, eight, ten, ter ter 10 terms. What does that average score look like? When that average score gets to be around like five or less, that's when a lot of leads really start to flow in, right? So we pay really close attention to that. So now that we've kind of like reduced, we've got 20 sites, I've got two managers, we have a big team, right? We have people that are writing content, we have people that are responsible for getting GMBs, we have people that are responsible for um, getting, getting the backlinks, um, building, we have developers that can add in the new content to the pages. So we know that we're going to go through and we're going to look at these, we're going to say like, how many live pages does each one of these sites? What's our target for the next 90 days? So then we can basically make pacing metrics for each one of those things for what we're trying to go. We, we need to reverse engineer it. Is there a way you could write out in one of those columns, like the, what you're using to get to the total of 10? 
like what what goes in what factors go into the 10 that you named them and i guess we can go listen to the replay but potential revenue like we are looking at the the market and we're looking at the population of the city we're looking at the um, like what can this really max out at so we like these numbers are my team is experienced right they're comfortable with like uh, not having like this this isn't um, like, hey, 500,000 equals this. this is, there's a lot of feel stuff because we've been doing this for a long time. So yes. we just kind of looked at it. So for instance, like carpet cleaning, the potential revenue for that, I think would be lower because the average ticket cost is low. But maybe if we're considering like um, home remodeling in Chicago, then uh, that is an expensive niche and that's a huge city. So the potential revenue could be like a 10. And that's relative to other, you know, revenue that we have coming in in our agency, right? But the difficulty might be really high and that's really about the competitors. So like, how tough is this market? Mm -hmm. um, so if the, if the revenue is really high and the competition is low, like this one, for instance, look at this one, this is an eight, right? This is an eight in revenue, which is high for this scale, but the, the difficulty we, we have it as a, as a five. And we're kind of in a decent position already with a 6.5. So maybe in this scenario, we have like three or four different uh, GMBs in place. We've got two websites. Um, we've got somebody on a trial right now for whatever this was. And then you can see that this ranking, this last column here is where we said, okay, this is a high ranking means that we're going to go after that. So these were the, like the 10 markets that we chose. And from so you're on these, page one or like the top three or something like that for high. Like you're already there at high. Like no, you're high, already there. high ranking is like um, our desire to priority go. of uh, like sure. our internal priority oh, okay. of like, should we go into this or not? Okay. Right? Good. So if you look at one of these, you can see this one we marked as low, right? So we said the potential revenue is a 5.5, but the difficulty is an 8.5. So that ended up like, okay, let's not mess around with that one. So until you go through and you kind of like stack these up next to each other, this was, these were all ones that we were really in quarter one, we were trying to go after all of this stuff at the same time. All of these came from like priorities. And we saw that the client is really satisfied too right now. So like we could add in a bunch of extra stuff for him, but it's like, he's, he's, it's, it's not going to make a huge difference. Similar to, to line 14, Patrick, that's an interesting one because it's high potential revenue, not too much difficulty, but we still have it as a low priority, right? Right. This client is like over the moon with us, right? We have him They're as coaching. a 10. Yeah, you're coaching yeah. with them kind of. Well, and they, don't, they may not have room to grow. Like we know if we give them more leads, we may not be able to get more money from them for whatever reason. They're, they've reached their limit or whatever. Like there's some other factor there. That's why it's rated that way. Even so, though it could be super lucrative. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Like on the potential revenue, would you put like a five? Would that be like an average client value of 10,000? Like no, a, like, a um, yeah. So, so I would say that like a seven is probably around like $2,000 a month for us. Um, okay. Yeah. So it's, and it's also kind of like taking into effect a few different things. We, we, you know, you could really geek out on this. And I think it's important to, when you feel yourself starting to go down that path to like pull yourself back and say, look, let's keep it simple. And let's just get like the, the meat and potatoes because this is enough for us to make a good decision. You can see, if you look at all the high ones that they have like good revenue potential and like the difficulty is, is lower than, than a lot of the other ones that are on this list. This was enough for us to make the decision without going crazy and saying, okay, like one unit equals $500. We're just like kind of, kind of feeling our way through it. Um, so right, is, well, I mean, super helpful and a really interesting way to look at all of it. Cause then you can have it right in front of you, right. As a visual, like, yeah, you know what, this makes more sense. We should go do this with this person. That's right. That one lower. Yeah. This came and I encourage you guys, I didn't want to, um, I had an idea of, of how I wanted this to go with my, with my leadership team when we, when we started this meeting. But if you want your team to be enrolled on this, these decisions need to be made together. So like these numbers were mostly, um, you know, I put in my share and, and my kind of influence 
on it, but these were something that we came up with as a team. So now we have everybody is on, on the same boat. We're all, we're all like understand why this is important. And we've set this as a company together, which I think is huge to have everyone, um, you know, contributing to this, right? They're not just getting assigned things. We're working as a team to come up with this stuff. We're all learning and growing together. And through that, I think there's a lot of like enrollment that they have towards their dedication towards this. They, they, as a team, we chose this stuff, right? This so is I, so I'm, I have to sign off for, for now. And I just want to make one comment that it's so good for you, like seeing you do this because it's giving the people who work for you and with you a more of like a, like a, like a vision, right. And a mm-hmm. mission for where you're going. Like people love to follow somebody who knows where they're going. They want to jump on board. If, and especially if they know the direction that the company is going and you have a unified vision, then you'll have longevity, you'll take off and even more than you have, right? And and the people that are with you are gonna more likely wanna stay with you because they know kind of what overall is happening. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. It's, um, it's you know, uh, I've made a lot of mistakes while I was building this company and, and the way that 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 I've managed people and, and um, it's important to learn. I, I've continued, and this like Will Smith book that I was mentioning, I've continued to constantly try to educate myself and then, adjust. And this is a, um, a very common management principle is to get your team. Um, you know, this, this is a leadership team. You guys are going to make better decisions if, if you have this group group thought. And your goal should be to hire and um, get your team to a spot where they can, like, they can make better decisions in some areas than you, or, you know, they have very valid viewpoints and that's what we have. We, we have that within our team. We have a, a great team full of people that are really considering things that in, in the group together, we're so much better than, than it would be just like, Hey, do this. Right. Did so, you put them through the CVI? I'm sorry. Did you put them through the CVI, the core values index? Um, I did. We did uh, the disc profile thing. Cool. The CVI is, um, they tested it. Like um, I'm, from 30 years ago to last year, it was a 30 year mark for the program and they had a 97.7% accuracy of the people who took it year one. And you think of how much life you live in 30 years and they've got the same values. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, it's, it's something I'm really getting more into and, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be a better manager for my team, be a better CEO and have them be better managers for the people that they manage so um, we're really, um, I'm pushing them hard to level up on their own and, and um, you know, learn some of these things. So, so yeah, so this category here, we've got the market. So the market could be multiple cities. That's kind of how we do it in our agency. Um, so for instance, like Minneapolis could be the market, but that could include like St. Paul and some of the surrounding cities. So we've just done it that way to simplify it because of our strategy of like going after these like sub cities. We choose a market and say, okay, this is like all a part of the same market, right? So um, the live GMBs is like, how many Google My Businesses do we have in place? So you can see for this one, we have five. We have five in place, right? And we know that the UR, so this is, these are HRF, Ahref stuff, is a 48 and a 32. So um, this one would probably fall into the category of being like well-positioned, right? Because we've got good backlinks. Um, it looks like we have three sites. And um, we've got, uh, looks like nine GMBs that are covering this, this same area. So um, to- the traffic value is an Ahrefs thing. And this is the number of reviews per GMB. As I was mentioning, we pay a lot of attention to the heat map average. I think that is a critical piece. If you guys are not watching that, that is like, you should put that into your, um, what you're monitoring. Uh, the- those averages really correlate with the lead flow. So the problem is this is a lagging indicator, but we're we're paying attention to this stuff, but you need to reverse engineer this stuff. These are all lagging indicators, right? So a, an example is like, how many live GMBs do we have? So if I know that when I make a post, I'm gonna get like 20 addresses and three of those are gonna go live. And if I have a target that I need to get like, Um, you know, nine Google My Businesses, then I need to make three posts and I need to send out 20 or like, I need to get 60 addresses. 
So you need to be tracking that stuff. Those are leading indicators that are going to result in the, the like this lagging spot here, right? So I actually told our, our managers like, hey, you guys need to go and, and like do some local market research on these areas and find out what we need to do to get the position that we need to, to, to be in. And then we're going to reverse engineer those and we're going to have a pacing metric for each one because I want to be able to look at it and say, okay, week one of 12, where are we? Are we one twelfth of the way through? What do we need to do? That's where that course correct comes in place. So if you don't have a pacing metric that's saying like, we're off pace after week one, then like, how are you going to course correct? So you need to be able to take this stuff and turn it into something that's qualitative, quantitative, so that you can say, okay, this is where we should be. This is where we are. We're off pace. What are the adjustments that you're going to do this week so that we get back on pace, right? You have to do this stuff. Otherwise, this planning is just like whatever. It's just floating around. You've got to turn this into an action plan that can be adjusted every week. So you, you slow down, decide what your quarterly goals are going to be, and then work backwards, reverse engineer those, and make sure that you're on pace. Just like those of you guys that have um, been through the accountability groups, um, just like that, where it's like, hey, I want to read 90 pages over the next 90 days. On day 14, you should be 14 pages through, right? So you've got to have that, that pacing every step of the way. This is, we, uh, I mentioned this a few times. Jeff and I, we went to a, um, a big, um, uh, 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 an intensive, like, live event and they brought in this the chief the ex chief marketing officer of salesforce and she talked about how she had the pacing metric they were off pace she said we're basically going to have meetings every single day until we get back on pace with with her leadership team they did she was proactive if you are the cmo for salesforce it's not like they get to the end of the quarter and they're like hey this is the goal where, oh, I'm 50% of the way there. Oh, it's okay. Her name's Katie Foote. They're not like, oh, it's okay, Katie. Just try better next quarter. No, they're like, you're going to get fired and we're going to bring in somebody else that's going to get us the results that we need. You guys need to hold yourselves accountable to the same thing. And you're going to have some, some you got to reverse engineer and come up with the numbers so that you can accurately have the accountability that's leading you toward the goal that you need, right? This should, if you do this correctly, you want to try to choose the numbers and the metrics that you're paying attention to. So if you do these things, then you're like guaranteeing that you're going to have this result. So that's kind of like how, how you do this. Live pages is just the, um, the amount of pages that are live on the website, right? And then completion percentage. So we have a checklist with, um, I don't know, a couple hundred things that we think we need to do for every site. So this could be like, hey, we need, um, you know, the GMB to have like these like 40 things done, right? We've got to have like this many reviews. We have to have the citations, all these different things, the website, how many pages, like all these different parts and pieces that make it up. So that's the completion percentage. So that's what that is um, for this. Obviously our priority sites, we're going to have those all be 100%. Like all those steps need to be completed if we're going to try to hit our target.